I love it when Jacob talks about obviously Morse code of weather, but especially when it's fresh in our mind, current yeah. conditions. What just happened not long ago? We've had some yeah. really interesting snowstorms, mm -hmm. which means a lot of interesting things for me to talk about. <laughs> but the Sunday storm piqued my interest in particular because of how wide ranging the snowfall totals were, specifically in south central North Dakota, because of what we call mesoscale snow bands. We'll get into that in a second. But here is a radar estimate of the amount of snow that fell, and we had a lot of, a lot of ground truth to these totals in south central North Dakota. So here's Bismarck, north and east of the capital city, a lot less snow fell down to the south and west. So like Flasher, Elgin, you saw between 8 and 12 inches of snow, even down towards Linton and Hazleton, 6 to 10 inches of snow. But right along the axis of the Bismarck-Mandan area, we had a lot less snow to the north and east. And within the city limits, the north side of town saw 3, 4, 5 inches, whereas the south side of town at the airport officially, there was 6.7 inches of snow observed on Sunday. So what's the culprit behind this? Well, this is a radar snapshot from Sunday afternoon with this very intense linear snow band, very small scale thing in within this larger system that produced very heavy snowfall rates and pivoted very slowly over the same areas, giving those areas a lot more snow under this heavy snow band compared to areas farther east where the snow band did not reach because of dry air. So what is mesoscale snow banding? It's heavy snow concentrated over a relatively narrow or small area when compared to the in entire system. So mesoscale means very small scale. Synoptic scale in meteorology means a lot larger scale, the system as a whole, the area of low pressure and the fronts attached to it. Whereas mesoscale, take this snow band for example, it's only about 5 to 30 miles wide and a length of between 50 and 200 miles. The duration of these mesoscale heavy snow bands can be about two hours. And it creates for very tight gradients in snowfall totals. So if you have a satellite image after a snowstorm, you can get a lot of upset people where, hey, sometimes the forecast verified. Or if you're just outside of that heavy snow band, you can be pretty upset that you didn't get as much snow or the forecast didn't verify it correctly. So within these mesoscale snow bands, we have a process called frontogenesis. It's a big word, but breaking it down, there's a word front in there. So front in meteorology means a boundary. So frontogenesis means an intensification of that boundary, an intensification of that temperature gradient at the surface or aloft, which can produce or intensify these fronts, leading to a lot more rising air. And when we have rising air in the atmosphere, that creates more intense precipitation. So these mesoscale snow bands that I highlighted from a radar snapshot on Sunday there was a lot of frontogenesis going on within those, creating more intense snowfall rates because we had a lot more rapidly rising air, creating more snowflakes and more bigger snowflakes as well. So here's a model that meteorologists can use to predict frontogenesis in the future. So North Dakota was here. This was a model for the future on Sunday. And you can see where it was plotting where frontogenesis was possible. And that's where we could identify where these heavier snowfall rates could occur. So going back to the basics with frontogenesis, the front term. A front is just a boundary or transition zone between two air masses of different density or temperature. So you can look at it three-dimensionally in the atmosphere. As that warmer air is forced to rise along that boundary, the water vapor condenses, cools, and creates that more intense precipitation. So it's all about that vertical motion. In meteorology, we have very complicated equations that our forecast models run on to simulate this vertical motion to determine where that vertical motion is most intense, and that leads to where the precipitation or where the snowfall is most intense. Here's another uh, model that we can look at behind the scenes to see where that vertical motion is greatest. And there's a parameter called omega that we look at to determine how much vertical motion there is in the atmosphere. When omega is negative, that means there's more vertic vertical motion, more intense precipitation. So over this time scale right here, we had a lot of vertical motion in the atmosphere. That was leading to that intense precipitation. And if that vertical motion, if that rising air occurs within a specific layer of the atmosphere called the dendritic growth zone, that produces very large fluffy snowflakes called dendrites. So your saturation and your temperature have to be perfect for these 
most like well-formed snowflakes to be formed. So you need that large vertical motion, a lot of rising air in the atmosphere, the right amount of saturation, and the right temperature to form those snowflakes. And that's what we had on Sunday within that very narrow, heavy snow band. So this is a plot that meteorologists look at. It's called a sounding or a skew T plot. This is what we get when we launch weather balloons in the atmosphere. But we can also look at these on forecast models. So within a heavy snow band, we had a saturated layer of the atmosphere within that growth zone where snowflakes are formed, and we had a lot of vertical motion indicated by that negative omega value. So a little bit of complicated math here, but it's uh, best to forecast these only within about 12 hours of the actual event. So this is why there's some uncertainty with these forecasts, because we don't get those fine-tuned details until it's a little bit sooner to the uh, actual snowstorm happening. And we can look at these forecasts models, see where that growth zone is in the atmosphere, where there's a lot of rising vertical motion, and then we can determine where those are going to set up, if they're going to pivot over a certain area for a prolonged period of time, like we saw on Sunday southwest of Bismarck, and that led to very impressive snowfall totals in that area, but not a whole lot of snow, not that far away. Hmm. Yeah, it is fascinating. And it makes weather interesting oh, to yeah. forecast. Keeps you on your toes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It really very complicated. Yeah. But we try to figure it out with yeah. all these forecast models. We do our best, but sometimes the atmosphere humbles us. <laughs> That's very <laughs> there true. There you go. That yes. Is the best Good way to stuff. put it, Jacob. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs>